Is a fourth stimulus check going to be tied to economic conditions? If so, what is going on with the fourth stimulus check now that we've had some important economic numbers released lately, just like the one this morning? With that being said, let's get into it and discuss it. But before we do, I need to quickly apologize to you. I'm not quite sure why, but I'm really lacking focus today. I keep having these hallucinations that I'm on a deserted island surrounded by palm trees, pineapples, and flamingos walking around. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on with me, but if you haven't done so yet, make sure to peck at the subscribe button right down below the video, just like a flamingo. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And yes, I know, don't quit my day job. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I got it, right? Anyway, thanks everybody. I really appreciate it. So where do we actually stand with a fourth stimulus check? And is it really going to be tied to economic conditions? That's a really good question as we've had some really important economic numbers being released lately, just like the one that came out this morning. Let's quickly run through it and see where we actually stand with these economic numbers and what it means for a fourth stimulus check. So this morning, the non-farm payroll number was released. This number is released only once per month and it pegs the unemployment rate. So this, ba this number basically just tells us how many jobs were created in the previous month. Well, it came out at 850,000 jobs were created last month, according to the BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics. However, what's interesting about this, with all of these jobs that were created, the unemployment rate went from 5.8% to 5.9%. Yes. So here's the thing. When the president and Congress and everybody looks, or and, uh, economists, when everybody looks at all of this information, all of this economic data, they look at how many jobs were created, but more importantly, they look at the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate went up a tenth of a percent. <laughs> Yeah, so even with all these jobs, the unemployment rate still continued to move higher by a tenth of a percent to 5.9%. So with that being said, what is the fourth stimulus check actually going to be pegged off of? Is it going to be these numbers, these economic numbers, or is it going to be pegged off of something else? Well, that's actually a really good question. And here's the thing. It's not just going to be one factor alone. It's not going to be like, oh my gosh, the unemployment rate is 5.9%. We need to issue a fourth stimulus check immediately. No, it's not going to be totally that. Although they do look at the unemployment rate as well as job creation and a host of other factors out there as far as what's going on in the economy, right? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like pea soup. Well, no, that's not a good example because there's just peas and pea soup, right? It's kind of like... What's a good, it's like a pot pie, right? There's all kinds of stuff in a pot pie. I don't know why I thought a pot pie. It's just, that's all I could think of at the moment. There's all kinds of stuff. You might have the crust on top. You maybe have some chicken peas. You might have some potatoes and carrots. You might have mushrooms. Are mushrooms in pot pie? I don't know. Anyway, you have a whole bunch of things in the pot pie that make up the whole pot pie, right? So that's kind of how it's going to be when it comes down to the next stimulus check. They're going to be looking at all of these different factors, putting them together in a nice little pot pie, putting some nice crusty crusting on top and putting in the oven for 45 minutes or whatever you do. I don't know why I'm choosing pot pie because I don't even bake or cook, so I don't even know what's going on. But either way, there's going to be a bunch of different factors that they look at to determine if a fourth stimulus check is needed. However, they're going to be looking at it as well because remember this, Democrats currently have control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. This is the first time they've had full control like this since 2009. So it's been 12 years since they've had full control like this. But we also need to remember, they want to maintain and establish, yes, you called it, a legacy. A legacy for themselves is way more important than basically everything else. Because when we look back on this time period right now, now when we go into the midterm elections, we don't really know if they're going to maintain control or if they potentially lose control in the House, the Senate, well, not the presidency, but that could be, you know, later, but that's not in the midterm. If they potentially lose control of the House or the Senate, they no longer have full control of everything, right? So all of these major, these big packages and their agendas they want they, that they want to get through right now could potentially be in jeopardy if they potentially lose control as of the midterm election that is happening next year. So remember, right now with all these big 
uh, bold plans like the American Jobs Plan, the American Families Plan, these multi-trillion dollar packages that they're looking at, when they push these things through, it is essentially establishing a massive legacy for themselves. Like, hey, check it out. When we were in full power, we got all of these different initiatives through and we got all of these different programs through for the people or for the the, the economy, for the, the country as a whole, like all of this infrastructure, like roads, bridges, airports, waterways, uh, ports, canals, you know, all the different stuff, drinking water. Um, things like this. So when we look back on the history and the legacy of the Democratic Party, and when they are in full control right now, we can look at it and say, oh, wow, they did a bunch, right? Well, what would also solidify their legacy even more? Well, <laughs> I can think of one way they can do it. It is by issuing a fourth stimulus check, right? So as of right now, they've only issued one, a $1,400 stimulus check that was issued back in March of 2021, right? A few months ago, we all know about this. So that's the thing. So I guess the main question would be, do they want to go into the future? And more importantly, do they want to go into the midterm elections just with everybody re uh, remembering, uh, hello, maybe you only got us one $1,400 stimulus check? Or do they potentially want to go into midterm elections and going into the future with, hey, we got a $1,400 stimulus check for everybody, plus we got a follow-up, um, you know, who knows what, maybe $2,000 stimulus check as a fourth stimulus check for everybody. We also established free college and childcare. We also established all of this other infrastructure spending and all of these other programs and initiatives. Would that look a lot better to voters and the people when everybody hits the polls next year? Or is it going to look like, oh, you know, they talked about all these trillion dollar packages, but really there wasn't much in there for the people at the end of the day, right? So at this point, it's more about legacy than it is about establishing a, a fourth stimulus check strictly based on economic conditions. Get what I'm saying? So yeah, it's all about reputation at this point. So again, I just wanna make it very clear. I'm not taking sides. I'm literally just laying this out in such a way that says like, hey, this is what they have to look at and this is what they are actually considering. In fact, AOC, who happens to be one of the progressives in uh, the Democratic Party on the uh, in the House, she's actually been on Twitter multiple times over the last, I don't know, couple weeks that I've seen these posts from her. And she's been saying things like, hey, you know, this is our this is our time right now. Hey, Democrats, everybody, let's rally around. Let's get something done here because we have no clue what is coming as a result of the midterm elections. We could potentially lose control in one of the chambers. As a result, there goes all of our initiatives out the window. It's not happening anymore. So let's go big, let's go bold, and let's go fast. In fact, a lot of them say this, and <laughs> I kind of rip on them a little bit saying, dude, fast is not really a thing anymore. You guys are moving incredibly slow. If you wanted fast, you should have done this a while ago. So either way, you know, somebody like AOC continues to tweet and say, you know, these comments saying, this is our opportunity. If we want something done, we've got to move fast right now. Let's get these things hammered through. And for the most part, whether you agree with what they want to do or you disagree, the fact is the midterm elections are coming and nobody knows what is actually going to come out of that next year as, you know, potentially they could keep power or lose power. Either way, we won't know until then, but either way, we do know the, the elections are coming and between now and then, they can basically get anything done that they desire through budget reconciliation. And yes, including a fourth stimulus check, fifth stimulus check, universal basic income, monthly stimulus checks, you name it. They can basically get anything like that that they want done through budget reconciliation, which is exactly what they are working on right now, right? So I know this, um, we kind of went off track a little bit on this, but you know what? I wanted to explain this a little bit further because I think a lot of people are looking at this saying, oh, we created 850,000 jobs last month. That means it's all bets off on a fourth stimulus check. I would say no. In fact, no, not at all, because check it out. Yes, 850,000 jobs were created last month, but the unemployment rate went up. That is not what they want to see. They want to see the unemployment rate go down. But yes, it actually went up last month, which is actually kind of a bad thing, right? So it is a whole host of different things that they're looking at to determine if there's going to be a fourth stimulus check or not. But at this point, we continue to be in this weird limbo phase where we're basically just waiting for Congress to come back from their vacation or for somebody to come out and make some kind of statement and let us know, yes or no, will there be a fourth stimulus check? 
Now, I know that there's an article rolling around online out there right now, which I actually want to address in a different video, but because um, this one, you know, kind of getting long at this point. Um, but either way, I want to address that because a lot of people are very concerned about this article that's out there right now. I would say, <laughs> don't really worry about it, seriously. We can talk about it in a different video, but I just want to let you know that, yes, at this point, I do feel like it is all about legacy and reputation on the Democratic Party as far as if slash when they actually decide to offer and issue a fourth stimulus check. However, between now and then, I will continue to make these videos and I will continue doing everything I possibly can to get attention and to make noise on a fourth stimulus check. Like I continue to say on Twitter and in my videos is the least that they should be doing, the absolute least they should do is a one-time fourth stimulus check. Now I get it. Everybody needs far more than a fourth stimulus check. Everybody needs recurring payments, raises to benefits, UBI, you name it, whatever we happen to decide on. But at an absolute minimum, minimum, we should get a fourth stimulus check focused on the lowest income individuals, ideally $40,000 of income and less. Why do I say that? Because that's really going to focus the money on the people who actually need it right now versus the people who probably don't need it as much, right? We really want to focus it on the lowest income individuals, $40,000 and less. That's the number that I continue to go back to and I feel like it's totally reasonable. $40,000 of income, whatever the income comes from, whether it's a job, social security, SSI, SSDI, VA, whatever. Any kind of money that a person brings in, anything less than $40,000, I feel like let's give them a $2,000 stimulus check immediately. No waiting around, stop all the dragging of feet, you know, kicking the can down the road, whatever metaphors you want to say, but let's just get it done, right? So I'm going to continue to be your advocate and I'm going to continue to push for this as much as I possibly can. So either way, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, make sure to go ahead and peck at the subscribe button <laughs> right down below the video if you haven't done so yet. Just like a flamingo. I mean, do flamingos peck at stuff? I would imagine so because they're a bird. I've honestly never witnessed a flamingo eating stuff, but um, I guess pecking sounds right. That's what birds do. So go ahead and do that on the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. And uh, make sure to go back and check out some of my other videos here on the channel as I have over 1,200 videos. And of course, share them with your friends, family, social media. Thanks everybody. Just remember, I am here to help you in any way that I can through these videos. And of course, keep you updated. Enjoy your day and I'll catch you later.